so we we landed uh, on on the planet. The one person we picked up from the ice planet, their friend that they you know flirt with, they kind of got a thing going on, but they don't know they got a thing going on. You know, like that me and Mrs. Jones kind of situation. And so, what's a Mrs. You know, Jones? Yeah, you'll learn it when you're older. Uh, <laughs> so then, you know, we we we're we're setting up a trap. For the dark sider, we're learning them here. Liebeck sensed them; they're on the planet. They're nearby. Oh, yeah. oh that's and right. We are on the Sensed them. Liebeck with my brain. Yes, and they were over there. Yeah, they're coming this way because they tracked you back. So we're setting up a trap because Liebeck had a plan to mm -hmm. drop a whole bunch of. I don't know, space trailers on him. Well, I haven't gotten to talk to you guys about that because we're still running to the dock, and then I'm going to explain on the way. I thought you explained that already. No, that was out again. So, like, the people listening don't know that that's a thing. We got to tell them about it. I Dang, think this is real life. I think that you should spend a Benny and do a flashback at the moment where it becomes relevant. I think that would be a more fun way to do it. <laughs> and then I have an idea that, and I need Xena for it. Cool. That doesn't sound ominous at all. It's gonna be great. <laughs> all right, guys, we don't have any time. Let's go. Follow me. Oh, we are Wait, why am I running, running down the streets of Kessel. Totally not suspicious at all. If you're not suspicious on Kessel, you're suspicious. Well, and like, let's be real. Do you back running and everybody else is sort of like almost but not quite speed walking? Because I got a little leg. Do huts even run? How do they run? They're always every time I see they them on slither. Screen, I'm carried. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, faster slithering. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're just gonna use your arms to just like propel yourself. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be yes. like flat hockey. It's fine, Vesper. We'll use the force. Well, not you, because you know, you just hold off on that. We'll leave it to the chat to figure out how what the fastest mode of transportation for huts is. <laughs> That's a very good idea. Everybody listening, if you think of the fastest way that a hut could travel, if you could leave that in the comments, that would be very helpful. I'm thinking ski poles. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like sled hockey for the people that the, their legs have some kind of problem so they don't do ice hockey, they're on the little swings. Yeah. What, 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 what is hockey? It's, it's a sport. What's a sport? People chase after a tiny object with a stick. Oh. And they hit, the, oh. they hit the object and they hit each other. Why does like so? Why does so many things with you deal with people getting hit? Mostly you. Were you the little object? <laughs> but not on that time. There was the other gun, but that was different. <laughs> oh, buddy. Right. No, I so usually anyway, don't get the You are running it's, down it's the streets of Kessel, heading towards well, streets, hallway, whatever you want to call it, heading to the nearest cargo bay you can find. Because that's as much as Gleebeck told you is, we need to go to a cargo bay, as you all are running and or hut skiing. I like it. Okay, the start in uh, a so hangar, let's end it one in one. I'll have an idea. That's my okay line. I said that? I mean, is it okay? Is it I'll allow it. Okay, all right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to jump into one of the, one of the cargo movers with the, with the large the thing. Right? And then we're going to get a whole bunch of stuff edged up so that then when he shows up, I'm going to drop one of these shipping containers on him because that's, you know, I mean, it's as big as a drop ship. Like that should be significant enough to make it work. And so that's what we're going to do. And somewhere in there, I'm sure we're probably going to have to like stab him with a lot of I will handle that. Okay. That's good. So here I have the two light tables. And the room in your brain that has all the guys in front of it, and it's really hot. And then it, 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 it leave that alone. I, I, I feel like if we move some of the baggage, we could put the fire up behind the door if you let me. Nope. But just, just a couple of things. Move nope. out of the room. Then the door. Mm -mm. Will nope. Nope. You want me to go in your brain? Nope. 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 Well, we gotta. We gotta. We gotta take care of a bad guy. Okay. So. I'm gonna jump in this ship. Does anybody else know how to fly? I've been here this whole time. Oh, can you do it on that one? All right. Do you want the blue one or the red one? I'll take the blue one. Okay. I, uh, at some point, uh, kind of pull Hale on the side. This is a dark Jedi. This is the real deal. Are you sure you're ready for this? No one's ever ready until they're ready. 
I suppose you're right. That's not the truth. Well, I'm here to stick it out with you guys till the end, because we've made it this far by sticking together. I'm going to extend a hand and say, may the force be with you. <laughs> did you guys do that? Tyler was not the best for our purpose. We did that it! ruins a moment. <laughs> I'm going to go throw up real quick. <laughs> Well, I mean, if we're all gonna, if we're all gonna die, I didn't sign up for that. No one ever signs up for. Well, I mean, some people do, but I guess they're weird. <laughs> we are not dying today. That's not my plan. I like I'm that attitude. A drop ship. If it doesn't work, then I'll be able to go to where that fast sergeant is. Guys. Also, Zena, yeah, come come over here. I got a, I got a plan for us. Oh uh, yes. Rule number seven. You don't have to be faster than what's chasing you. You have to be faster than your slowest friend. That's a rule of life. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go back and roll the footage later because I feel like every time that Gleebeck has had an obscure rule, it's always rule number seven. <laughs> All right, so I don't know a whole lot about Dark Jedi guys. Like, yes or no? Do I start shooting him with a blaster? You'll know when to start shooting him. Trust okay. me. So that is a that is a potential yes on the plan. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to put this back in my pocket so we need it, okay? So Gleebeck and I are flying over with separate speeders, dropping containers, and then you two are doing whatever on the ground, or you three are doing whatever on the ground, creating the diversion while we get in position and drop stuff. Is that kind of the plan? Yep. Is that um, enough of the plan for me to understand? It's enough of the plan to then throw the plane out the window. Right. Jana, what are you going to be doing during this? Uh, I don't know. What should I do? Well, How you got that I badass have... blaster. You might just set up and snipe. I have been really, I have been doing really good with that. Yeah, because okay. apparently he's, he might be here with friends. And if he doesn't show up alone and some friends show up, we might need somebody to start picking him off. Okay. Yeah, I could do that. No problem. So, Jana? Sometimes the people with the lightsabers, they can hit blaster balls back where they came from. And you are the third friend I've ever had, and so please do not get blasted by your own blaster. I'm going to try not to die if David. Okay, I would appreciate that. Okay, you too. Don't die. That's my plan. You make it into the uh, <clears throat> cargo bay. This one is a little bit more uh, spacious than some of the other ones you've seen on uh, this particular uh, habitat on Kessel. Probably on account of being one of the larger ones that the criminal organization here uses to shuttle and maintain their goods. There's a small security element here, though even they seem to be more focused on what's coming this way after uh, Leoric's friend basically threw money at all the slime and scum here to uh, stop the people coming this way to try to kill you all. Fully aware that all of them are essentially going to die, but it gave you guys time, but more importantly, it gave him and New York time to get somewhere safely away and probably to amusingly watch. But that means once they get past all of these people who you admittedly will not feel too terribly bad about any of them dying, um, there's not a lot between them and you other than a few shipping containers. Should we warn the people that work on the dock about how, like, imminent death is headed this way? I feel like we should do an announcement. Will we have time and opportunity to do that? There's a little button on my ship and it still turns out the microphone thing. And normally it's supposed to be used when like there's an emergency happening and you need people to move so that a giant shipping container doesn't turn them into a pancake. Should but we, like I could use it for other stuff. Should we do should we make Gleebeck do the announcement if they're gonna do it? Do we really want Gleebeck making the <laughs> announcement? That needs to be concise. <laughs> I can handle this responsibility. I think Gleebeck can do it. But, I mean... Tell them there's a crate dragon attack approaching. <laughs> can there be crate dragons on, on uh, Kessel? There aren't, there aren't crate dragons on Kessel. They live on a different planet. Say one of the mines is, is, is going to explode or something. Greetings, employee. Um, this is your warning to go and be someplace else, so that in the next few minutes you do not die a terrible, awful, no good, very bad death. Um, nothing personal, there's just like, really bad stuff coming this way, and we would prefer if your lives were not on our content. 
<laughs> um, assuming that we have a counter. So yeah, um, run. That's that would be a good plan. Eh? Unless you want to help us fight, in which case, then you know, we're, you're welcome to. I'm very curious yeah. what Gleebeck's persuasion score is. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna need a persuasion roll there. Let's go, Gleebeck. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Gleebeck got a bang. Wow. <laughs> Success <laughs> and a raise. Wow. That's oh, incredible. <laughs> yeah, the uh, workers that were in here that were securing the uh, spice and trying to get it quickly loaded so they could evacuate the things the syndicate does care about, meaning drugs, um, seem to decide that, you know what? Dying versus this, we'll, we'll take the not dying part, and they all just sort of sidle out of the room. Like, I'm not sure if I believe him. Other than the direction you just came from. Like, I'm not sure if I believe him, but I'm not going to stick around and find out. Basically, it's like, some. oh yeah, somebody told us work was cancelled. I didn't bother checking with the, the manager, but you know what? Good enough. Fair. <laughs> they'll, they'll have to punish him first. Right. I, I can ask for forgiveness. You have, presumably, a few moments. It doesn't take long before you can hear the uh, sounds of blaster fire. The occasional uh, scream echoing down the hallway. And a crescendo of violence beginning to reverberate as the bulk of the security forces and the uh, hired guns not too far away from where you just were are engaging and based on the sheer amount of blaster fire that you can hear you're pretty sure the dark jedi is not alone can i make an electronics check to see if i can basically jam the blast doors to give us a little yeah. time yep crushing it today with the rolls that's a 14. nice okay um yeah that's success and two raises do you want to just jam them make them not work do you want to that, that's enough raises give me a little bit more yeah so i'm gonna jam the doors and i'm going to see if i can access the security mainframe see if maybe there's anything i can use to my advantage whether it's cameras or automated turrets or anything like that that might be in the cargo hold there's definitely external cameras that uh, you're able to tap into the uh, local security. Uh, there's these are the systems that are active in the uh, the hangar. Okay. There's the cameras both looking out and inside. There's the uh, mag cranes that are used to maneuver the cargo, and there's the uh, atmospheric shielding. Like most cargo bays, it's just hostile environment on the other side. In this case, being Kessel poisonous atmosphere and uh well just a whole lot of not great things you want to breathe in because on top of poisonous atmosphere industrial waste uh lower thinner atmosphere not enough to create a vacuum but it would definitely be a pressure differential um so yeah you could turn that off if you wanted though that's probably worse for you guys than them i, will. Uh, I bet there's a i bet there's a system that prevents fire from spreading Probably. There's always a fire suppression system. Unless, like every other corporate entity, they, you know, cut safety to, you know... Well, but they wouldn't risk that stuff. around that. They're like, we know that they have one because we are by the drugs, and the last thing they want to do is lose the drugs. The losing is people and is it's... negotiable, but losing stuff is expensive. Yeah, and it, it's not like this is a submarine company or something anyway. It's a drug syndicate. <laughs> no. <laughs> the funniest part about you making that joke is that this episode is going to come out in about two months, and it's going to be completely out of the social zeitgeist. <laughs> and then everyone's yep. going to be like, oh yeah, I forgot about the summary. <laughs> that, I'll be responsible for bringing it back. It's fine. <laughs> that works. I'm good with it. <laughs> there are also emergency doors you can close to further shield the outside. Yeah, so I'm going to close up all the doors. I'm going to access the security camera so I can time when I'm going to use the bag lifts to start dropping containers. And instead of getting into the thing, I think I'm just basically going to be guy in the chair right now. I'm going to sit up in this uh, control center and see when I can drop things and watch the cameras and whatnot. Um, I Gleebeck was the guy in the chair. Oh, Gleebeck's the guy in the speeder. So. Oh, okay. I'm on the space okay. forklift. I mean, or, if you're yeah. both the guy in the chair, I'm okay. Like, Gleebeck could be in your lap. It'd be like, take your kid to work day. 
I don't know which uh, is more scary. The idea that Gleebeck is forklift certified or the idea that Gleebeck is not forklift certified and is doing this anyway. <laughs> I'm a circle yes. driver. You've uh, got a few moments until, uh, or probably minutes, until uh, your adversary gets here. Anybody else uh, do anything special to uh, get set up in this place, or are you just uh, hanging out, waiting? I need to use the force to reach out to Luna's brain with my brain. Okay. Okay. Luna, it's me, Gleebok. You remember me? <laughs> you're, you're, you're five feet away from me, buddy. <laughs> okay. Why is it hard to start coding? Um, so, uh, you know how sometimes you can use the force and remember things that haven't happened yet? I can do that. I just thought everybody can. But so, anyway. On the cameras, you can see uh, those uh, black armored uh, troopers that you encountered way back ago in Narshada. And by way back ago, I mean it's actually been like a week and a half. Um, it's been a busy week and a half. One of them come around the corner. His uh, blaster pointed down, sees the uh, closed doors, signals as a few more come around, moving in a uh, relatively tight formation. And then shortly after that, Black Robe, swaying behind, is the Dark Jedi. He looks none the worse for wear. His features are obscured by a uh, segmented metallic mask. Lightsaber, not ignited hanging from his side. Despite the troops moving tactically, none of them seem particularly concerned. They attempt to open the door, and then one calls back, Door's locked. Override. Roger. As they start trying to, uh, hack your hack, basically. I'm gonna pull a Qui-Gon and kneel and meditate. I'm aware that this is, like, the opposite of meditation, usually, because normally it's all about kind of, like, finding your, your emptiness, your, your void, your zen. Um, or whatever Star Wars Zen is called. I think that's just the Force, actually. Um, but is there something you are meditating on? I am doing my best to let go of the last time I went out in a life-and-death situation. Give me a spirit roll. Okay. What'd I get? I got like it was a five. So you want to sit there meditating and uh, trying to... Uh, let go of a past that uh, is responsible for putting you where you are today, after a fashion at least. History has not been kind to you, especially when it comes to uh, valiant stands against a superior foe. But at the very least, in this moment, you're able to consider simply the presence and not the implications of it. And this time, you're fighting for you. And, you suppose, some of the other people in this room, but... Though there's certainly repercussions, since you have an idea of what this Dark Jedi is trying to accomplish, there aren't quite so many lives hanging directly on your shoulders this time. You... get a plus one on your first roll to become unshaken, if such a time should come. Okay. Zena, Jana, getting up to anything? Or uh, just waiting until the violence starts? I would like to assume that I'm in a really good, like, position to start blasting. Right. So, so hanging out. find some good cover with a nice line of sight towards uh, where they're going to be coming in through? Mm -hmm. Okay. Behind Consider crates. yourself to have cover then, which, uh, Cody, I'm backing you up here. That's what, a plus, plus two, two? Plus four? Uh, it's plus, plus two, plus two uh, and I think it's plus four for, like, total cover. But you can't That's shoot right. from behind that, so yeah. Okay. You hacked that door really well, yeah, and they are having problems with it. At first, That's the uh, Dark Jedi is just sitting there, waiting patiently, but eventually you can see furtive movements, a slight uh, flexing of a hand at first, then a very slow pacing as they uh, bring out a plasma cutter and pry bars, essentially a industrial size hydro spanner trying to force this thing open as you you broke that thing all kinds of good that's work man uh can i like type something and type a message into the console for for them to see absolutely give me a taunt roll okay oh yeah 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 that's a thing uh i am unskilled in that so that's what we're doing so four on the wild die i've scored 
for you. Did I pick that up on the camera? Yeah. Guys, we got a name. What? What is it? What's the name? Ashakor. Does that mean anything to you? Sounds like a stupid name. Does sound pretty stupid, doesn't it? Does he look like a bitch? At this point, Vesper is like full on like the church kid who's been hanging out with the bad influences for too long. And it's like now trying to suddenly be all edgy. Uh, it says make like a sabacc card and flip. Dark Jedi stops pacing for a moment. The posture just shows irritation that has given way to a moment of rage. So this is the part where he's going to cut the door open with his lightsaber. As he stands <laughs> back. And she just thrusts forward a visible and palpable wave of distortion coming off of it as the door shudders, almost buckling. If you hadn't double locked everything down, that would have ripped it through the wall, probably. But it dents outward. The steel cracks. The door's not opening the conventional way after that. You can see through it in a few very small places. Guys, I think I heard his feelings. So Dark Jedi have feelings? I think they have too many feelings and that's the problem. And that would make sense. Salem, are you a Dark Jedi? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. I, I am dark, but I am not a Jedi. That makes sense. He raises a hand again and rips as the door just peels outward. <laughs> Oh. Two uh, steel claws that have basically gouged their way out of the hall, sending shrapnel dust flying as he walks out, saber igniting in the process. Dreamback's gonna say out loud, Zuna, this is different from how I remembered it before it had happened, so it's entirely possible we're not gonna survive like it did. Sorry. Oh, she thinks. He strides in. His uh, fire team moving in behind him once they've uh, picked themselves up from uh, having to dive out of the way of him uh, not caring what was between him and a lot of you. Are we doing the obligatory parlay, or are you guys just gonna like start shooting him or something? I kind of want to let Halem have the dramatic talk with the villain. I'm going to uh, stand up, lightsaber in hand. You look good. Do something with your hair. Where is the sample? Sample? What is this, a space Costco? <laughs> sample? You took it. You just turned ocean on the ocean down. I didn't take anything. I was sort of left with something. Like, can you can you be a bit more specific? Help me help you. We're talking about me? No, not you. Shh. I'm doing a thing. You mean nothing to me. The sample, and I'll leave you be. I mean nothing to you. Are you trying to hit on me? Wow. That just... You know, it, it feels nice to be appreciated. What is your parry? My parry is a five. Oh! See ya, uh, see you later! It's, it's been fun! Okay. As you, um... Continue mouthing off, he simply throws his saber, the blade staying ignited as it uh, flies, straight towards you. I have danger sense. This guy's he got a 14, that's... Yeah. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Make an agility roll, you get a chance to maybe react. Okay. Wow, no way. Are you kidding no, me? No shot! No shot! <laughs> the perks at home, tell them that You don't have a full action, but if you want to interject something about how you would try to uh, defend yourself or what you would do, I will modify what happens at my leisure and largely my personal amusement. Okay, uh, I'm going to keep it simple and uh, barrel roll out of the way to the left. All right, now, okay. try spinning. It's a good trick. Hmm. And then I'll be like, dick move, man. It's big Peter Parker energy. Hey, uh, let the angst go. He's, he's, he's getting back to his old self. 
I'm going to treat that as a area attack and just say you are able to dodge and roll out of the way, but instead you are shaken, but no damage occurs. Okay. I'll give you the least bad potential outcome of that. As the uh, saber, he calls it back to his hand. The next smart remark, and I will be speaking exclusively to somebody else, because you will lack the capacity to do so. Where is the sample? Xena. Yeah? Is it time? Yes. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I imagine this is exactly how she's reacting. <laughs> okay, yeah, Sorry. I got it. Sorry, I got this, guys. Oh, I got this. Up until okay. now, she was probably just, like, leaning up against a cargo container, looking really disinterested and everything, so... Yeah, 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 okay. Um, um, okay, I'm gonna, uh, uh attempt to, uh, create- use my magic and create a ring of fire in front of him? All around him. All around, all around, all around him. Around everyone? Both of me. Me and him. Okay. Five. Um, Five. that's... Okay. Uh, with your- that's an illusion or actual fire? Actual fire. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, someone's gonna hate with plan involved lighting something on fire just with your help this time. Yeah. So it worked, right? So there's fire around him? Yep. Yeah. Okay. See, this is what I like to call the circle of trust. <laughs> so you can leave with your friends, or you can trust me that we're going to put you in the ground. I mean, intimidate check. Is that a five? Five. Five. And he gets a three. Well, he doesn't look moved to a state of fear by your threat. You've seen enough of this, what's inside this person's head. You don't think fear is something they would have a rational reaction at any point in time. But you made him mad. And you're pretty sure it's the stupid kind of mad. It could go poorly for you. But it also means carelessness on his part. Like all things, it's a gamble. But it might give you an opening. Okay. Pause real quick. Now, something we've talked about before is the fact that my character has two lightsabers, but I didn't know two lightsabers would need a multi-action penalty, and I didn't know it was a thing that I needed an edge for. You yep. once talked about how you, I can treat this like a Pokemon battle and level up mid-fight. So, is that going to be an option? For dramatic purposes, yes. Okay. Because I think I owe you all a level up anyway, don't I? And if not, this would be a level up session, so I'll, I'll allow it. Like, They're all level, level up sessions. sessions. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Insert meme of Peter Griffin. They said it! <laughs> I'm going to activate my normal halo lightsaber and then out of the boot leg comes out another saber do you want to know what happened to your sample you see there's a thing called space and <laughs> when you're on a ship and you open your door things want to get sucked out into the vacuum of space and so if you, if you want to know what happened to your sample, there are parts of it in one galaxy, parts of it in another galaxy, parts of it in another galaxy, you know, it's just, these things happen. And you know, it, I, I know this upsets you, it's okay to feel sad. He says, kill all of them. No survivors, we don't need to question them. Cowabunga it is! Alright, so let's see who actually goes first, because it's Jono with the, the Joker. And everybody gets a Benny. Hey. Yeah! Just remember, that means everybody. That's our class. I'm fine with that. Fiona. I'm just here to start blasting, so... So anyway, I started blast. That's literally what I was thinking. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> guess give me a shooting roll, then. Four, for the people at home. Uh, roll damage as, uh, you, uh, line up a shot towards, uh, one of the troopers. And, uh, it connects. How much damage? Well, the bolt hits the trooper, but uh, thick enough armor that it doesn't uh, do anything appreciable. They're going to return fire at uh, Jonah. First shot is an uh, entire one, followed by... Oh, oh. One hit. Oh, no! Oh, oh no, that ace. That's a success so, yeah. with a raise. 
my dad. Oh, holy! It's the okay. It's the so, so maybe, so maybe, um, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Am I dead? We'll see. What? What's no. your toughness? Uh, well, I rolled thirty-two damage on four d six. That's a thing. Just as a reminder, the way uh, damage works in this game is uh, when you take enough damage to equal your toughness, you uh, are shaken. Then for every raise over that, you also take a wound. So that would have been seven raises, so that'd technically be seven wounds. However, because we use the uh, house rule that you can never take more than two wounds at once, that would still only be two wounds you no matter how many races i got but um but also then, she can spend a wound uh, a bendy to soak yep so then you can uh, you know my lovely uh co-gm sorry like i didn't to, mean uh, to back to gm i, ke I just get excited works, i get so excited here and enjoy a well-deserved break <laughs> <laughs> so uh the way soaking wounds works is you're going to spend a benny and then okay. you're going to make a vigor roll uh, for every success that you get so for uh, four is one wound soaked which means that you don't take it, and then for every raise that you get after that is an additional wound you can soak. So if you roll okay. an, a, an eight or better on your vigor, you can theoretically take no damage, but you'll still be shaken. So you'll spend one yeah. Benny, and then you'll click where it says vigor. Because Jonna got the Joker, she also gets a plus two for the entire round, correct? Mm -hmm. So it's a five, so she soaks one wound. Okay. So you take one wound. Yep, so you take one wound and you are still shaken. We'll deal with the shaken when your turn comes up next. But, uh. I'm not yeah. Um, he returns fire and just unloads everything. Or both of them actually uh, unload with their uh, heavy uh, blaster rifles. And you get flipped a few times. You've got good cover, so it's mostly the blaster bolts hitting the cargo container that you're taking cover behind. Unfortunately, however, that container is empty. So, it's absorbing a lot of the shots, but you're still basically getting hit with the after effects of kinetic energy and bits of molten metal. Which hurts, but is not lethal. Halem, your turn. I am going to dash towards uh, Ashikor. Am I saying that right? Ashikor, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Uh, and I am going to like bring both sabers down. Give me two fighting rolls. I got a four on one. And a four on the other. You come down with a strong swing. Despite the uh, distracted and angered nature, as you can tell, he's about ready to just charge you and do the same. You move a little bit quicker, but he brings the blade up and just stops both of yours cold, flicking them around, getting ready for his own counterattack. Zena. So, um, before the, the guys came through our door, they were, like, shooting at stuff. Um, were they shooting at people that were yeah. there? Yeah. Are any of them dead? Probably, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yes, <David>. very sad. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Absolutely bereft. Um, <laughs> I, I can see the grief. I would like to um, use my zombie power. No. What? That's a thing? <laughs> to, uh... <laughs> Out time. Okay. Wait, no, I know that's a power in Savage Worlds. Is that a thing that Night Sisters can do? Yeah. Wild. Yeah. That's nuts. Yes. I love yeah, it. Night Sisters are like, we decided we wanted D&D in our Star Wars. So Hell yeah. <laughs> Why not? Night Sisters. Night Sisters are absolutely, they're the be most badass thing ever. Just. I need to stop before I just keep gushing about Night Sisters. <laughs> um, yeah, I would like to resurrect the dead people. Okay, um, how exactly does that work? I'm assuming there's a roll um, and then some number. It, well, it would be at the force roll and then. Yeah, it says uh, Zombie grants animation and basic intelligence to the remains of a once living being. The summoned horror is obedient, but literal-minded in its duties. It isn't telepathic and must be controlled by voice. Uh, the being has the physical skills it had in life, but its smarts, spirit, and related skills are reset to D4, etc., etc. So you can have a zombie with a blaster. Yeah. I suppose so. Okay. 
or a zombie with a fiber blade or zombie with fisticuffs, I mean, the options are endless. There's Whatever they got. Okay. Like I said, that gives you one zombie for now? Uh, well, uh... it gives you one, but you can spend an additional Benny to, or sorry, you can spend an additional power point to get one additional zombie per additional power point you want to spend. Oh. Oh, okay. I got 14. How many zombies you want? There's a lot of dead people outside. However many I can get. Just gonna spend all your power points to get 10 zombies? Yeah. Whoa. All right. I am mad at So actually, it would be um, it would be eight zombies because it's three for the initial spend, and then so you get eight okay. zombies total. That's fine. Okay. I can I can handle eight. From the hallway, which previously <laughs> was uh, still as a tomb, the dead begin to get back up as you weave the force into them like marionette strings, plucking at the tentative connection to life they had and uh, giving a semblance of who they were back to them. My sister's dark side what? No, not at all. <laughs> good as a point does, does anybody else right? play the matter? Arthur, all those people I thought were dead are standing back out. Stop Don't back. tell oh. them! Don't say that loud! Yeah, as uh, a number of people with blaster holes and um, a couple of lightsaber wounds just get back up and turn their uh, anger on Ashapor and his fire team. But in the meantime, Gleebeck, your turn. So Gleebeck is going to develop Clint Eastwood face. You are not gonna hurt my friend! So he's gonna drive his face forklift immediately above the dude that successfully shot Jenna and drop an entire shipping crate on him. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do a piloting so, roll close by there too. I got a four. I'm unhappy with that. We're gonna spend a bonus. Okay. I got a three. I'm unhappy with that. Spend a bonus. <laughs> we are gonna. You got five totals. So no, no, no. And you got plenty of bennies after. I got Man. a four. I'm gonna have to let that ride for right now. All right. Um, yeah, it's, it's not loving you. Seriously? <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, you drop the uh, cargo container, and uh, fun fact, that cargo container is large enough that even though you're aiming for one guy, both of the guys on the right of Ashikor would be crushed by it, but they roll and get out of the way. But for what it's worth, you provided substantial cover against them, but also for them. But they don't have a uh, direct line of fire at the moment in case they want to do something like shoot Kalen a lot while he's trapped in the ring of fire. He's gonna root into my pocket and pull out my blaster rifle. Okay. These guys are going down. Alright. On my next turn. <laughs> <laughs> and Ashapor. He just squares up against you, Halem, and I'm going to take that multi action penalty, and I'm going to uh, make two fighting rolls against you, and hopefully I'm gonna murder you to death. Mm. You got to tell him, don't die, buddy. That, that is a. 14, uh, guys just don't like you. Um, like, or maybe they just like the bad guys. It's fine. We're gonna be fine, guys. And a 24. What's your parry? Is it better than uh, 24? No. <laughs> Finally, a worthy First opponent. First one that connects for... Okay, that could have been worse. Uh, 22 damage. That's still gonna be wounds and the second one connects for oh, thank you. Uh, 14 damage what's your toughness uh, my toughness is five okay so one success one race so two wounds from the first hit and one wound from the second um, you'll get to you can make two separate soak rolls, one for each yeah, of those. Yeah, so you can want. make two separate soak rolls if you want, which we will re-explain if necessary. Otherwise, you can make a bigger... Is that, two, bigger. is that two bennies? Yeah, you'll spend two bennies and you'll take two bigger rolls. Yeah. You okay. don't have to make a soak roll, it's just... Those uh, are the ones who were there. We were milk hello. We have lots of space oh, adventures nice. to go on. I got a ten. That's, right, that's two. a success in a race, so that soaks two wounds on the first one. All right, we'll keep it at that. Okay, so you'll uh, accept the one wound? Yeah. Okay. He is just 
swinging fast. It's a bit of brute force, probably more than somebody of, uh, what you can tell with this person is actually a fairly light build, but he is just putting the strength of anger behind it and focusing on trying to cut you down rather than anything else. Um, unfortunately for what little it's worth, he's proficient enough with that blade that uh, his ability to defend against your attacks is still substantial, even in this comparably careless state. The uh, remaining two troopers, I think the only person they can really see at this point is uh, actually Xena and, oh no, and uh, Gleebeck. Since Gleebeck just dropped a cargo container, they're going to shoot at Gleebeck. Bring it on. But Gleebeck, since you're in a vehicle, you get to make a piloting roll to oppose the, the shooty roll. I rolled a five, they rolled a four. And so okay. that means I am a better driver than they are a shot. Correct. So As uh, the, they shoot, a few the bolts connect, but you're able to kind of just move it where they deflect and don't hit you. Uh, nor do they do enough to the vehicle that you need to worry about uh, it going out of control. And we are finally at Vesper. So here's what I'm picturing. I'm kind of like near the back on like at the control thing. And you said they were kind of like maglifts for the containers. So I'm thinking they're kind of like a, almost like a conveyor belt thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate the uh, conveyor to send one of the shipping units down like above where everyone is. And as I hit the button, I'm going to jump on top of it uh, and kind of like ride it over. And as it gets, I, I don't know if I can do this all in one turn, but this is a, essentially where I'm going with this. I'm going to ride it over and then like chop it uh, when I get above people to drop in on people and then somersault off. Hello there. And then we okay. get to the Jedi shit. It's a, a giant claw game, essentially the way it's set up, but you can pretty much have it hold the container and then hit it to go over to a certain spot and then run out and get on top of it. Give me an agility check to do so successfully or uh, athletics, I guess. Let's do it. I got a four. You're able to uh, run out, plenty of time to spare as the container goes by, jumping, a little bit of force assisted as you just grab the edge and pull up. As the uh, container heads over, I'm going to say you uh, can't chop it this round just because it does take a while for the container to move, but you are in position. Sure. Give me a smart roll. All right. Ooh, I'm hella smart today. That's a 15. Looking at the battlefield, the way things are moving, you're able to kind of make a guess as to which way people might dodge. They're going to have a bit of a heads up because they can see the container coming in. So, you know, if you go right above them, they'll just move somewhere else. So you do some quick battlefield arithmetic. People said math was never going to be useful. To make an educated guess as to what course you can take to uh, have the best chance of cutting it as it's moving to still do some damage as uh, they're trying to get out of the way. Basically, you gave yourself an intercept course, and uh, as far as you can tell, it's spot on at the moment. They're second guessing which way to move. Heck yeah. Roll all. Jana goes first with the Ace of the Diamonds. You're so can... Damn it. <laughs> I was so ready for Yeah, sorry. Ace sorry. of Spades. I just keep blasting again. Yeah. Just taking one shot, or are you going to take a multi-action penalty to take multiple shots? Can I do that? Yeah, you can take up to three actions. Um, each additional action you take is a minus two penalty to all of your actions. Like, you can take a minus four, but shoot three times. Okay. I would like it's to all that, that risk versus reward thing. Let's just go, I'm gonna go all out. So no good on that one. Like, can I spend the voting? Sure. Yes, you can. Your time. Because these guys are red shirts, they're supposed to die. You get two more shots. Oh, one. <laughs> I'm not doing super good today. I imagine you just tur you just turned on full auto and you're just doing spray and pray. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Okay, so the bad guys are exploding and you're getting screwed on dice rolls with that uh, combined total of a negative two. Negative one more, two. one more shot. One, one more. more. Come on. We believe in you, D sixes. Oh. Mm. Sorry, guys. Wow. Okay. It's that scene from Pulp Fiction where the guy fault. comes out of the bathroom and just... <laughs> 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 yeah. As uh, you unload in their direction, three shots, uh, which blow holes in the wall behind them, but uh, unfortunately miss them uh, going 
all over the place. This is what happens when you go to a battle when I'm hungry, because I have not gotten my space chicken this whole time. <laughs> this is true. You haven't had a space chicken on Kessel. It's, it's fine. After we're done, we'll get some space chicken yeah. shawarma when we're done. <laughs> space <laughs> shawarma! Yes. Uh, and then the troopers. That is going to be the one shooting at Glebeck. Come on, Lord's Earth. <laughs> that, that's rude. Give me that piloting roll. They rolled seven. Eleven. Because yeah. I'm better than you. <laughs> you you are lucky. You, that, that's what you are. You're lucky. Okay. Glebeck, it's uh, your turn. As they uh, continue shooting, and uh, while clinking against your uh, hover forklift, they're not doing enough to even damage the forklift. I've got an idea. I'm gonna drive my space forklift down and grab one of them and lift them really, really high and then let them go. Yes, <laughs> good. Okay, give me a piloting roll at a minus two. That's definitely a space OSHA violation. That is, yeah. <laughs> Call a lawyer. And an opponent. I've got a proof. Yeah. Um. <laughs> there it is. 13, you are not gonna hurt my friend. Okay. Well, Gleebeck, you uh, drive the, uh, the hover forklift, that's our space forklift, down to uh, grab one of them. Um, to everybody else watching, what Gleebeck has overlooked, you don't realize this wasn't the plan, but he did, is that uh, the forklift picked things up by going, you know, putting the tines of the fork through them, as uh, one of the troopers is speared through a forklift as Gleebeck then pulls him up, and while you're all aware, he is definitely dead already because of things like spines, Gleebeck then yells, you're not gonna hurt my friends, and then drops him off of the forklift to which the already dead trooper becomes deader upon hitting the ground after about a one-story fall. <laughs> That's right. I did really yeah. enjoy Sea Cow's Gleeback impression in there. That was great. <laughs> that, that's what I'm here for. So, hey, look. Ashitor, having uh, spent that little bit of rage you forced into him, still continues his attack, but not as furious. A bit more controlled. But still, potentially a better swordsman than you are. What is your parry again? I forgot. Five. Five? Okay. Just making one attack. So, oh, not a better sword than this time, not with that roll. Uh, that's a three. I'm gonna spend a Benny, because I'm allowed to do that <laughs> with wildcard villains, which he most certainly is. Um, and make that roll again. Because, uh, I, I, I. You were rude to him. He definitely hits and uh, deals damage. For 16. God, lightsabers are nasty. I forgot it's got that plus 8 on there. Yeah. yeah. No, they do a crap ton of damage. Okay, yeah. so for what this damage does, so how much, how many wounds is that? Uh, your toughness is what? Five. Five, okay, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that'd be two potential wounds. Alright, we're soaking. Cool. Uh, got a nine. Okay, so you negate both wounds then. Cool. As, uh, he comes in for what? could very well be a killing blow, you're able to, uh, at the last moment, sort of block, direct a little bit, and move with it. He gets up close. You have no idea what you're doing this galaxy to. Ignorance. Typical of your order. And Hit him with the line! That... Say the line! I'm no Jedi. Two troopers, they they are also going to shoot at Gleebeck. Um, One trooper. <laughs> dropped a container on them and then just speared a guy, and also he's a very visible target. Um, oh, hey, I forgot to give them the bonus for shooting multiple people. Oops. Or for having multiple people shooting. So were there two or were there three? How many were there? Uh, this group has two. The other group had uh, has one now. Oh, or something. Ha! I hurt you! Yes, I'm happy about that. I, I choose to hate my players when it comes to combat. That's my Bring it on, I'm not a pro. That is not a damage roll. That is, in fact, a really <laughs> bad shooting roll. Um, is that an explosion? No. Oh. Okay. 
So I don't know what the toughness on a uh, forklift is, but I'm guessing it's not very high, and it probably doesn't have heavy armor. So leave up. I'm gonna say that's a wound to the vehicle, and you're gonna need to make a piloting roll to uh, avoid um, going out of control. Does a seven work? Yes. You uh, the vehicle it takes the shot, and you are rocking. It's probably going to go down soon. You're going to lose altitude, but you're able to keep it from instantly going down. Uh, basically, That's like okay. you guys, the vehicle can take three wounds. So, uh, you take penalties for each wound the vehicle has taken, and, uh, there's always a chance that it goes out of control and does things like crashes or blows up or has a meltdown or, um, impacts something, and, uh, there's nothing deadlier in this game than a car crash. It will murder anything. There's a reason that one X-Wing could take down a Super Star Destroyer. The car crash is the most dangerous thing in the game, you say. <laughs> Why did I say that? <laughs> Whose turn is it? Please be mine. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's Vesper. It's Hell Vesper. yeah. So uh, we are going to chibity chop that uh, mag lift and have the box drop. And as... I'm hoping it's dropping like directly over top of some of the troopers. And as it's falling, I'm going to somersault off and ignite my lightsaber and land next to um, Halem and Ashakor to join in the scuffle. Okay. Give me an electronics roll to see how accurate you are with the trope. Oh my. That's a 10. They are so busy tracking, trying to shoot down Gleebeck and get so happy when one of them finally managed to damage this stupid forklift and then look up at the very last moment to see the cargo container, which there is no sign of them, fortunately. As uh, you're down to one member of Ashapor's fire team after that, as you roll off, landing uh, in the ring of fire. Uh, Xena, how tall was that ring of fire? Is he gonna like roll through your flames? I'm good with it. Oh. Cause I'm loving the idea of us just immobilizing Ashapor and leaving them to the biters. Um. I think that's the move here. <laughs> I'm going to drop in and roll in. And I feel like the timing of this is right as Halem says, I am no Jedi. <laughs> I come in with the lightsaber. I'm like, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, let me be cool. Damn it. I feel like Donatello just always trying to be as cool as the rest I'm of the turtles. Xena won't let anyone be cool. It's fair. <laughs> it's okay. The dice said I'm not allowed to be cool anyway. That's a critical failure. Wow. Critical failure on what? Sorry. Uh, that was my fighting roll to try and... As you roll through and take a swing at uh, Ashakor and miss horribly. All right. Well, ho hopefully it'll draw some fire away from Halem, who's taken enough damage as it is. Yes, he has. Um, and Xena, your turn and also your uh, zombie horde's turn. Um, okay, yes. Uh, how many troopers are left alive? One. Okay, I want him to go fuck up the last trooper. Were you gonna have him try to like shoot or like do hand to hand fighty fighty stuff? All of the above. Whatever they have. Okay. Give me one shooting, one fighting roll. Do D4 plus 3. 5. Alright, so that's gonna be one success. One of the groups uh, starts uh, shooting to, um, and uh, peppers him a few times. Roll 2D6. Yeah, not great. Stand the shooting at him. Stand the Benny. Okay. You gotta say it. You gotta say it. I'm gonna spend a Benny. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> so I just do that again. Part. And then, yeah, just do the same roll again. Fuck <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Wild. Same thing. Are you gonna spend another Benny, or just let let that be? Because you still got another uh, group. That yeah, you can also get the biters on them. Yeah. So yeah, we'll just leave it there for now. Okay. Uh, do a, another uh, D four plus three roll for the group moving into fights. Four. Still a success against his uh, parry of four at the moment. Do two D eight. Eleven. Multitude of blaster shots from the first uh, group don't do a whole lot. Most of them kind of going wide and floppy clinking as it. He turns around just in time to see four more of them come, some of them with uh, fiber blades, some of them just 
large and using their hands as they just bear down on top of him and dogpile, tipping him over through sheer weight and begin just beating on him as he's screaming more expletives than fear until there is a sudden cracking sound of, um, plasteel armor shattering, which implies quite a bit of, uh, what probably happened to the bone and tissue on the other side of that armor. Whew. He is not screaming ex expletives anymore, <laughs> as it is now down to just a lot of you and Ashcore. Halem! Okay. Alright, so I am going to do two attacks with two sabers, so that's going to be a minus two multi-action penalty, right? Yep. Alright, I got this part of the rope on you. I have a plan for this. So I need to I take, do the minus two, but I roll twice, correct? You basically make a total of four fighting rolls, but it's minus two on all of them. I got a 14 on that one. Nice. A one on that one. All right, I'm going to spend a Benny on that last one. So I, I, first school of the matter. Uh, 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 wait, no, where are Benny? There they are. I had to scroll up. Alright, come on. Ah, darn it. <laughs> uh, your first swing with that 14 connects. That is a hit with a raise. Um, all of your strikes after that fail to connect as uh, he, perhaps a little arrogant, let his defense down at first with the way things had been going, but then redoubles quickly. Uh, putting a bit more effort into it on top of the slightly uh, wild pattern of your swings, scoring no additional hits beyond. But that is still one hit with a raise, which a uh, raise on a fighting roll means you roll an additional d6 damage. Kaboom. That's right. 19. Nice. Yeah, 19 damage. I stabbed him super good. Well, Everybody I guess because evidently lightsaber fights are nuclear tag, uh, yeah. I'm gonna make a soap roll. Ashikor said I came to play. <laughs> like... yeah. He's got that villain luck going for him, but I am also running out of Bennies. I will admit that. Um, as That's he fine. manages to uh, just barely roll with the hit, the uh, your lightsaber begins cutting into his mask a little bit, as uh, Ashikor is doubled over, obviously in pain. He uh, manages to pull himself up, grabbing his uh, face, which is uh, bleeding. Obviously the mask broken, as there's blood coming down across it. As he uh, pulls his hand away, you can see a pulsing green mass across the side of his face, almost blinding him in one eye, as the unmistakable appearance of a Drengir infection seems to have bonded itself with him, but not completely consumed him. The one eye that he looks at you with in a state that should have left anybody else dead is pure rage. Well, gotta kill that. Thank you.